Today we're going to be having a look at how to build this hydraulic jaws of life model and what you're going to need in order to do this is a pencil or a pen, a craft knife or a pair of scissors and a Lego bicycle dude to keep you in check as you work and you're obviously going to need your curious kit. Right, so let's get started. Cool, so inside you've got all of these bits and pieces. This is the instruction booklet. You've got pretty much everything you need to be able to build this in this instruction booklet, but there are a few tips and tricks that I'm going to show you as we go. But if you feel confident about doing it, you can follow this and you should be able to get to the same point. So then we've got three sections of housing. There's a top, a middle and a bottom. The top and the bottom are exactly the same and the middle one is just slightly different. So. We're going to have those you find that you've got the jaws and they connect it like this so that it's one piece you're just going to take your craft knife and cut these open um, or your your scissors and we're going to use those for our jaws um, then you'll find that you've got a group of linkages like this they also join together so it's one piece and we don't have to have lots of fiddly little bits you've got this piece that we call an adapter plate or a syringe adapter you've got a piece of PVC tube as our hydraulic hose and we have a 10 milliliter, milliliter syringe and a 5 milliliter syringe. You'll also see you've got a 3 milliliter syringe full of glue, that's just wood glue, and a paper stick, it's a sucker stick but it's been pre-cut to specific lengths as our axles and you have got two elastic bands which we use to hold everything together while it's drying. Right, so let's have a look at how this thing works before we go into building it. Here is our model. I've just filled this with food colored red, oh yeah, red food colored coloring with water. And um, so you can see more clearly that it's it's got something in it. So this is hydraulic system. It's got water inside instead of air. If it had air, it would be called pneumatics. So we've got this piston that's pushing the fluid from the 10 mil syringe through into the 5 mil syringe and if you have a look here you can see that the amount of fluid that moves is always the same so if you pull it all the way out you can see that it's sitting around about the 3 milliliters if we push it all the way in you can see that it moves to around about 3 milliliters and there's some really cool principles that we can unpack there um, when we start to attach hydraulic theory to this. But the operation of it is that when we push this in or pull it out, it translates the force from this side to this side. It's a linear motion that moves in and out. And then it, through this linkage, the set of linkages and levers, it gets that linear movement into rotary motion and it pivots around that axle over there and over there. So if you have a look, those are now moving in an arc going in and out. So we've got linkages, we've got levers, we've got um, linear motion going into rotary motion. Cool. So how do we build this? Let's get started. So step one, you're going to take your glue and you're going to pull the little pin out so that it can come out. And we're going to glue all over this um, so that we can stick this onto this in the middle. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to very carefully, this is not careful at all, um, spread some glue over there. Don't put too much glue because you really don't need a lot. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my finger. Don't get this on your clothes, but it's water soluble, so it's not going to uh, not going to dissolve your skin or anything. Um, we're just going to spread it out nice and thinly. You want a nice thin even layer going all over the base and you're doing this on the middle piece and the reason we do it on the middle piece is then we only get glue where we need it. Then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to take this part and I'm just going to line it up along the bottom and stick it down like that. The cool thing about using wood glue on cardboard is that the cardboard's quite absorbent and it absorbs the moisture out of the glue very quickly and it dries almost instantly. So if you just press it, don't press it so hard that it crushes the flute, but if you press it together like that, you can see that we very quickly got this glued together. Right, so step one is complete. If you really want to, you can take this, put a book on top of it so that it holds it in place while you're doing the next step. 
Right, so our next step is to take our pencil and the axle stick that we've got and our linkages and our adapter plate. We're going to stick the adapter plate onto the syringe so that we can connect the linkages to it. But there's some preparation that we need to do first. So the first thing is that we've undersized the holes on these so that we can make a really tight snug fit for this so that it doesn't fall out. And this is what actually we call an interference fit because this one, this either needs to shrink or this hole needs to grow or, or expand in order for it to fit properly. So if you, if you take this and you try and stick it in the hole, you'll find that it really doesn't go in very easily. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your pencil and you're going to use the tapered end of the pencil to open that hole up a bit so that your axle can fit in before we start gluing these things together, just so that it's easier to fit it and get a nice tight fit as we go. So you don't want to oversize these holes too much but we need to make them a little bit bigger by just squeezing it in you can do it from both sides open up either side of the hole and it's definitely easier to do this this way around than rather uh, doing it after you've glued it together so you'll squash it up a little bit that's not a problem we're going to glue it together and so I'm just going to open up all the holes all the way around and you can see if you take this and stick it in the holes it's a tight fit but it sticks through nicely and it holds in place so it's not going to fall out and and lose its um, position right so we stretch those holes a little bit we're going to take our five milliliter syringe take our glue stick and we're going to glue up ooh, that glue is coming out take some of the glue that I missed on the table here and I'm just going to Spread that glue around all on the one side of the syringe. Just get a little bit more. You don't want too much and you also don't want it to clog the holes, but that's looking pretty good. We're gonna slot this onto the end of the syringe, like that. And you're gonna fold this over so that it meets the other side. Wiggle it so that it fits nicely and then squeeze it together on the end. At the back here, these are not gonna, this side's not gonna glue together because uh, the, the syringe stops it from, from sticking together, but we're just gonna pinch it over here to keep these together and just squeeze it nicely. And then you can also just take your pencil and clean out the glue a little bit between those so that it doesn't make the hole smaller and cause complications later. Great. So now we've got our syringe linkage adapter attached to the five milliliter syringe. Next, we're gonna take our axles, we're gonna take a craft knife or a pair of scissors and you're gonna cut off two linkages so that you can connect those to the Adapter plate, one, two, and you're going to wiggle those in. Remember, it'll be a tight fit. Try not to damage the paper too much. And you're gonna do that on both sides. So we're gonna take this side and wiggle it into this hole. Right. So our adapter plate is ready. And we're doing this first because it's tricky to get this on. It's not great when we are gonna connect it into the housing. But the next step is to take that and drop it into the housing. You can see that it fits quite nicely. And right, let's move on to the next step. So we're gonna take our axle, cut off another two roll it around, use your scissors, use your knife, whatever you do, do it carefully. Okay, then we're going to stick these axles into this cardboard slots on this side. I'm gonna open them up a little bit. Don't open them up too much because we want these to be nice and tight. And we're gonna stick them in, All right? And this side. Right, so now we've got the holes, the axles for our jaws and 
That's what we're going to do next. So you're going to grab your drawers, you're going to separate the little tabs holding them together. Right, and we're going to take those, and this is important, we're going to slot them onto the outer hole. So the hole on that side. Get it in the middle, do the same on this side, slot it in, and we've got that part of our model fitted. Cool. Next you're going to grab the other part of your housing, your glue, and again we're going to glue on this side. We're going to spread our glue all the way around. It might be a good idea to just stick on your tube before you go to the next step. So we're just going to squeeze that on there. I'm going to take this, feed it through, slot it in place, and then drop this down over the other side. Get the holes lined up. Right, now we want these to be joined together nice and firmly, so we're gonna take our elastic bands, we're gonna hook it over the end, twist it around at least once, hold it on that side, and on the other side we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna loop it over like this, and hold it in place right up at the top, so that that glue can dry in those positions. But before we leave it to dry properly, we just want to make sure that the axles over here are sitting in the middle nicely. And we're going to take, that's the wrong syringe, we're going to take our glue and put a little bit of blob of glue on the tip so that those axles are now glued in place. Make sure you don't get glue that glues this part to the main body, otherwise they're not going to be able to move freely. So these need to be able to move open and closed and not be glued in place. Right, so you're gonna put this aside and leave it for 10 or 15 minutes to dry off and then we'll continue. So we're gonna take our linkages and we're going to separate these. Um, you can twist them off, you can cut cut them off, you can you know, do, do whatever you need to separate them. Try to do it as neatly as possible. There is an extra one of these, you don't need all five of them. So if you mess one up as you're going, that's okay. So now what we're gonna do is we need to open these up for the other side of our axles. So the same thing we did before, we're just gonna twist, and open that up nicely. Okay, so I've spaced all of these holes and I've cut my two axles and I'm going to squeeze the one end on to the end of my linkage over there. And do the same on the other one. Right, so then you can take your um, housing, roll the elastic down. I haven't given this much time to dry, so I would recommend leaving it a little bit longer before you try and do this, but for the sake of time, I'm doing it like this. I'm gonna take this linkage and I'm gonna stick it through the hole on this side so that it goes through that hole there. And now we need to get this linkage onto that pin over there. And in, in doing that, we need to push, pull this out a little bit so that it, it fits. So if you can push it out a little bit further, it'll make it easier to access. And you now need to get this to fit over that pin that we put in earlier on. Right, and you're going to get the next one. Okay, and you're going to do it on both sides. Alright, so now we have our linkages fitting together and you can see that as the piston moves in and out, the jaws open and close. Wouldn't wiggle it around too much while the glue is still drying. But the last thing we want to do is 
put a little bit of glue very carefully to hold the linkages in place. That was way too much glue and we don't want that to go onto the linkage over there. So just be careful um, not to put too much glue like I just did. Okay, lob it on over there. But the linkages should be pretty tight as they are because we've toleranced those interference fit sections. Oh, that's too much glue. Let's see if we can suck it back out again. Yep, that works. Right, so make sure that your glue does not glue the linkage to the jaw like that, because that is going to lock it in place, not going to be able to move. So what you can do is you can take your little uh, glue stopper and you can use it to just wipe away some of the glue there. You can use a toothpick, you can use a piece of paper, whatever. You just want to make sure that that doesn't sit and get stuck there. And I'm just going to move it a couple of times to make sure that it's free. And then we're going to push the elastic back up again so that it allows it to dry nice and firmly, at least on this one. The last thing that we need to do is we need to bleed this um, hydraulic system so that it's got the water in it that it needs to drive. So I'm going to run across and fill this with water and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I filled my syringe with water and if you use boiled water, it won't have as many bubbles in it. It'll be degassed. Um, if you have a look over here, as I sucked it in, I got a bubble there. We don't want bubbles in our hydraulic system because the gas, the gas can compress and then we get sort of spongy hydraulics. So if you flick it, you can see the bubbles now sitting right at the top there. You can just squeeze that bubble out. Now the bubble's gone. I'm going to take my tube and slot it in. Right. So now we can use this to push our water from the one side to the other side. So I'm going to squeeze it in. But now you can see oh, it's pushing it out nicely, but there's a lot of air on that side. So I'm going to push all the water through. You don't push it too hard because it'll overextend on that side. Now we need to get the air out of this section over here. So we're going to put it upside down and I'm going to pull the water back. And in doing that, I suck all of the air that's in the system into this syringe. And now this syringe over here has only got water in the pipe. So that's how we start bleeding it. And then I'm going to turn it upside down. Got the bubble on this side so I can pull this off. Squeeze the air bubble out. Now we've got no water in, I mean, no air in the system at all. So if I press down over here, you can see that we've got a very, very direct system driving it up and down. And now your model is complete. So give it a bit of time for the glue to dry and then experiment and see what your Jaws of Life can pick up. Let's see if we can use it to pick up our Lego Man. Yes, we can. Right, he wasn't imp that impressed about that. Cool, I hope you had fun building this and that you learned something about hydraulics in the process.